Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain this connected filter controls error that you might be getting in your pivot tables and how to fix it. And I'm also going to explain the relationship between pivot tables and slicers. So this error here is typically caused when you are changing the source data of a pivot table. So in this example here I have two pivot tables on this sheet and then I have a region slicer over here that's connected to both of these pivot tables. So when I click a slicer here both of the pivot tables are going to be filtered uh, based on what I select in the slicer. Now let's say I want to add some data, some new data to my source data for these pivot tables. Right now these pivot tables uh, share the same source data which is on this sheet right here. And right now the source data is just through row 14 and I just pasted some data down here in rows 15 to 20 and I want to add this data to the source data of the pivot table. So I'm going to go back to my pivots tab and then I'm going to go up to the Analyze or the Options tab here, and I'm going to click the Change Data Source button. And now I just want to select all the data, including the new rows, and I'll click OK. And you'll see we get this error message right here. And that's because the pivot tables, both of these pivot tables are connected to the same slicer, and that slicer needs to uh, basically be connected to the same pivot cache in the background. So let me explain how this works, and then and I'll show you how to fix it. So here I have a diagram of what's really going on with our pivot tables and the relationships between the slicer and the pivot table. And there's also some invisible relationships going on here as well. So when we create a pivot table uh, based on that source data, in the background, Excel is creating what it calls a pivot cache. And this pivot cache stores the, the source data in the background, and it allows multiple pivot tables to use one cache, to share that cache. And that's exactly what's happening here. We have those two pivot tables on that sheet, pivot table one and pivot table two, and they're both sharing the pivot cache because they both are connected, or they both use the same source data range. So they're both connected to that cache. And then the slicer is connected to both pivot tables. At least that's what we see when we go to the uh, slicer connection menu and connect the slicer to both pivot tables. So that's what we're seeing here on the front side of Excel is a slicer connected to both these pivot tables. Now there's also somewhat of an in invisible connection or relationship between the slicer and the pivot cache as well in the background. And that slicer needs to be just connected to one single pivot cache. So the requirement uh, in order for us to connect a slicer to multiple pivot tables, those pivot tables need to share the same cache. That's a requirement of us connecting a slicer to more than one pivot table. So what we're effectively doing when we go to change that source data and get that error is that we're actually uh, creating another pivot cache because pivot table one is now going to uh, have the source data that includes the new rows. And so that's going to create, Excel is going to create a new pivot cache for that in the background. And the second pivot table does not include those new rows yet. So it's still going to be using the old pivot cache number one. And that's where this error is caused because the slicer cannot be, uh, doesn't, it needs to be connected to the same pivot cache for both pivot tables. So this whole relationship kind of breaks because we're now creating two pivot caches, but the slicer is only connected to that one pivot cache. So this just breaks the rules of the slicer and how it's connected to two pivot tables. So hopefully that makes sense. I won't get too far into the details of that, but that's the requirement of the relationship there. So how do we fix it? Well, there's two ways to do it. The first way is if I go back to my pivots sheet here, I can just disconnect the uh, slicer temporarily. So it's currently connected to both pivot tables here. I can just disconnect it from pivot table two and hit OK. And then I can go change the source data. So I'm now going to go change the source data for each pivot table right here. So I'll change this one hit OK. You can see everything's good there. And then I'll do the same for this pivot table. Change the source data again to include the new rows. So now both of these pivot tables now are connected or now use the same range uh, for the source data. So they'll share the same pivot cache again now. And now we can go back and connect our pivot table. So just right click uh, report connections here and then connect our pivot, I'm sorry, connect our slicer to our pivot tables and do that. 
and now both of these will work and of course we can hit refresh there to make sure we got everything refreshed and now these will work and the slicer is connected to both pivot tables again and they both use that new source data range which includes these new rows down here. Now another solution for this and what I believe is a better solution is to use an Excel table for the source data range of your pivot table. So in this uh, workbook here, I'm doing that. If I go to the data sheet here, you can see I'm using an Excel table here and this is used as the source data range for both of my pivot tables. So if I go back to the pivots and I go to the analyzer options tab and choose change source data, you can see that I have referenced here table one as my source data range. And this means the, the advantage here is that when I add new data to the table, it's, uh, the pivot table is automatically going to add that data uh, to the pivot table and to the pivot cache because we're using the table as the source data range. So we never have to go change that source data range again to include new rows. So if I go here and if I copy these new rows, I'll just hit Control-C to copy, go to my data uh, table here, and then I'm going to paste right below, Control-V to paste. You can see that my new rows are automatically added to the table here. The table's been extended down. And now all I need to do is go over to my pivot tables here and refresh. I can just right click refresh or Alt F5 and that will refresh, include my new data on both pivot tables because both of these use the table one as the source data range. And I don't have to disconnect and reconnect my slicers or do any of that. They just work. Everything works here and we're all good to go. So I highly recommend using tables for the source data range of your pivot tables. So I hope that helps. Please leave a comment below with any questions and I'll be happy to help answer them. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.